Uh, this is block one pre-calculus. And their average score out of 40, their average score is 33.75. And then here's block four stats test. They have an average of 36.1, again out of 40, so 90%. A median of 37 and a mode of 40 and a standard deviation of 4.62. So if I were to analyze these stats and compare the two different classes, right? So 36 is 90%. So this is an A and this is a B, right? Um, this is an A, this is a B, this is an A plus, and this is a B. This has a little less variation than this. So identical test, pretty much identical preparation, everything's kind of the same. What conclusions can I draw from these two sets of data? They hear us yeah, yeah. They, they heard us complain about it. Yeah. They heard us talk about the last question. Yeah, yeah, they probably heard us talk about the last question. And so, so, so they're trading on insider information. Yeah, yeah. Can you, is that a fair yeah. assumption? I mean, how many people yeah. think that? Oh, well, definitely. Yeah, that's like, I have yeah. Three that's friends it. come up and ask me. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, how many people think Block 4 is smarter? Yeah. <laughs> right? How many people think that I teach better Block 4 than Block 1? Well, I mean, they could be more awake during vlog four. That's not true. Not after lunch. I honestly think if we switched it, like, if they came and talked to us, our scores would be like that. Yeah. Like that. I think it just has to do, do with, that. oh, how was the quiz? And then you talk yeah. to them about it, and they go back and can review their notes. Yeah. Oh, that's, no, that's brilliant, Delaney. That's brilliant. So did everybody hear what Delaney said? Yeah. So she said if we actually reversed it, the grades would reverse. Right? So is that a valid hypothesis? Mm -hmm. yeah. So how would you, how, how could I test that? Yeah, how could I test that hypothesis? Yeah. Give a test, block four today, and then we talk with them. Or no, we wouldn't have time to talk with them. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Give us yeah. So, okay, give a test, block four today, and then give us a test, not tomorrow, but the day after. Yeah, because we wouldn't have time to talk to them, because they would leave. So we'll talk and to them And then we come here in the morning. Right. Um, oh my gosh. So that's a, so that is a good hypothesis. I mean, I, that's what I think as well. I think this is trading on insider information, um, and I think that's why these scores are substantially higher. And I think a great test. I, I think a hypothesis here is is that if you know what's going to be on the test, you can perform at a higher level. And a good way to test that hypothesis is, in fact, to give this block the test first, and then give this test to you you know, a day or two later, where you could talk to your friends, okay? I'm just kind of pointing out, so as a teacher, I kind of look at the statistics and figure out what sort of relationships there are between blocks, between kids, between classes. And this is actually a, a bigger telltale of me than anything. There's less variance, meaning that people are clustered tighter, because in general, people kind of know what to expect. Everybody kind of understand that whole process? Well, that's exactly what you're going to do with the stats project, right? So you have four blocks, I mean, four basic mass tests that you've taken, that you've collected data on, and you're going to look at that and see if you can prove or disprove your hypothesis. <coughs> so if I could use Maddie as an example, Maddie hypothesis is that playing card games is going to improve your Algebra 1 skills, right? And then she's going to have all the data to show it. And her paper is going to say, you know, in fact, that my grades did improve substantially over time on that quiz because of that, or they did not improve over time. And therefore, I cannot make any conclusions. I mean, you need Everybody to really think about what you write about first, like any paper, and then make that introduction, and then clearly follow it up and, and make your conclusions. And then your graphs and whatever charts and data you're going to have is going to support your conclusion. So if you turn over that handout I just gave you, there's a rubric for grading. Um, one, two, one through four, the hypothesis really needs to be clear. What is it you're thinking you're going to prove? Right? And then you really need to demonstrate your statistical knowledge. That's Number what content knowledge three is. tables and charts. The tables and charts that you put in there, 
really need to be relevant to your point. It, it's identical to an English paper, right? All your supporting paragraphs need to support your introduction. And then finally, how well do you conclude that paper? Is it really the point? There are a lot of things I'd like you to take away from this. One of the things, besides reviewing basic math skills and then learning how to do a whole stats project and stats paper, is a portion of metacognition, like where you kind of look at how you learn best and figure out, you know, what actually does work really well for me, what doesn't. And hopefully that'll, you'll be able to bring that into other classes as well.